Ask anybody whether they would like to hear a digital recording or an analog recording, and they're most likely to say digital. You know, it's more modern, there's less noise, there's less pitch variation, well, no pitch variation, and you can keep it in the palm of your hand on a device. Fine, we all know where we are with that. Now, it's important to understand, though, what a signal is. It starts life analog. These two AKG C414s that I've got set up here are each outputting an analog signal. And somewhere along the line, it's digitized before being stored on computer. Likewise, when it comes off the computer, it goes back into the audio interface and out through a pair of analog outputs, which feed the speakers here. You can get digital outputs that feed speakers as well, but the output of the speakers, this is a piece of rubber and card that is moving backwards and forwards. It's analog. That's It does exactly the opposite of what the mics do. The mics pick up disturbances of the air. The speakers disturb the air themselves. Now, why have I got two mics here? Why am I recording with two mics? If you look at your computer screen, if you look at the, the other screen, you can see that there are two signals being recorded, one from each of these microphones, and they look the same, don't they? Well, to all intents and purposes, they kind of are. I'm speaking with these two mics right next to each other, so there are only going to be minute differences between the acoustics of those two. One of them goes via this. This is the Soundcraft Spirit Studio, which is a semi-pro desk. This one made in about 1998, but the design is from the early 1990s, so it is 30 years old as a design. So that must mean it's no good, right? It must mean it's old hat. So I want to take it and throw it away or sell it for £20 or whatever. Well, no. I'll explain that in a minute. Now, I'm going to perform a little experiment. I'm going to say 1234, 1234. I'm going to say that four times into the computer. And at the top of your screen, you will see basically which mic I'm on. Either the one that's gone straight into the audio interface, which is one of these mics, or the other one, which has gone through all of these analog gain stages, you know, gain, or EQ circuit. And uh, although the EQ is flat, Soundcraft didn't include a bypass switch. And then it goes through a fader, and then it goes through another amplifier into the output bus here, which then feeds the computer. You think there's quite a lot of resistors, capacitors, chips, all sorts of nasty gremlins that can really sort of destroy the signal on its way through. Then, after I've counted, I'm going to hold a visual signal up for counting one, two, three, four. But this time, there's going to be massively amplified signal, which is the noise, which is the silence, if you will. So that's what the other two tracks are for on the computer, audios three and four. They are going to be, I'm going to cut those signals and put them on a pair of tracks, boosting the level by 24 dB, which is huge. Now, as you can see on the mixer, on the, the computer, which I've got open here, you can see that there is no EQ at all, nothing. No EQ, no processing uh, whatsoever. Apart from the gain, as you can see on three and four, which is gonna be where I'm gonna put the noise. And also on the output, there's a limiter, which is just to bring the level up loud enough for YouTube. So here we go with the experiment. One, two, three, four. 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 Now, when you heard the 24 dB amplified version, you may have heard from a Hercules aircraft over there somewhere. Well, yeah, but that's the other thing, of course. I'm in my studio, which is reasonably good at insulating sound, but really to hear the difference between the noise floor on these two things requires careful analysis, and you've got to really work out whether it matters or not. Of course, if you're in a very, very quiet space, and you have to be in a very quiet space, everything on Earth, every single object on Earth generates noise of its own in some form. Even a guitar sat on the wall, the strings aren't going to be completely still, they'll be bl blowing about in the air, they will still be just sat there resonating gently. So it's very important to not get too hung up on things, saying, oh, I've got to get rid of this because it's no good. Now, the result of this experiment says one of two things. It says that the sound card isn't very good, or it says that the desk is very good by the standards that we expect. We expect no noise on our recordings, but there's always going to be some. 
Now, analog desks, I said just now about the advantage of an analog desk. Lots of people like the tactile nature of physical faders and control knobs, and they can go easily to an EQ and you know, adjust as appropriate. Whereas on computer, you have to sort of double click on things and go into the EQ. And Now, the computer is much, much, much more flexible with equalization. And of course, the computer's got reverbs, it's got the limiting compressors, it's got everything else, all the effects that you could ever want in one box. But we've got to sort of give the desk a bit of credence because if you are into your sort of soul and funk music, the early 70s, like I am, you'd want to overload the input of your sort of channels when you're recording drums. So you get a really fat sounding drum kit. And you can do that by just turning the input gains up on the computer. Now, you cannot do that with a digital system because if you overload a digital system, it doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know how to store that information. And so you get these nasty sort of pops and, and, and really sort of sharp, razor sharp sort of clicks if you over record. So having an analog input stage which is the, the mixing desk here, is really quite a useful addition. That's why I've got it. I've got this so that I've got another way of working and just more things at my fingertips. So there we are, the comparison between a 30-year-old mixing desk and a sound card that's four years old.